This tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, this is a short tutorial with an outcome which is unusual for this channel. It's It gives you a task, you need to do homework. <laughs> okay, the dots, they come from this animation here. This tutorial works without any deformations, really, so you can just stick to a static polygon mesh. But uh, I just show you where the deformer is. You find it under animation. And here is the deform menu, a huge menu, nonlinear, and I use the wave deformer. And um, it has a wave handle here. This is uh, what you see here. It changes all the time, you see, in frequency and in amplitude. And it rotates a little bit, I think. I rotated the handle here and I translated the handle. And the wave is just, uh, the amplitude is static. And the wavelength is uh, just changing with a sine function, I guess. Whatever, you can do this or don't do it, whatever. You need a mesh in order to understand this tutorial. We have a bifrost graph here, which I'll delete now. Now you go to Windows and open the bifrost graph editor and it provides you with three options getting started leads you to tutorials they're quite complex bifrost browser which leads you to examples which are quite complex and create a graph and that's what we're going to do today it's um, a simple graph which we're going to create and you might say we can do this easily with n particles yes surely you could do this with n particles with just uh, few clicks even more refinement but uh, we need to deal with bifrost graph because it's such a powerful tool and uh, if you say there's a documentation missing no there is no doc documentation at all so we have to learn and teach uh, ourselves uh, this tool basically manually we have an input and an output and like in most cases we don't need the input so we delete it because our input is going to be the plane here. So I drag the plane with the middle mouse button in here. So the polyplane shape is in here. Now I want to create points. And that's why I press the key tab. And these are my recent searches here, so just forget about them. Uh, we type in point. And we get a huge variety of uh, list of options here with point. In the name point scope etc what we don't need is add points for example because we have enough points anyway so you need to think a little bit about it and uh, what we uh, want here is we get point position it's right here so the get point position basically gets the point the position in x y and z from that object here this is an object and this is just the vector description of where all the points sit and by points they mean these points right mouse click vertex these points the red ones the vertices this is light blue and this is light blue too this is a very promising connection which we can make so now the shape goes into the point position so we have many more informations here about that shape we have faces etc and maybe UV mapping etc all in that P plane shape but we only are interested in the point position now and now we have the point position this is green this doesn't want to go here really and uh, it's not enough anyway because the we have the points now but uh, we need to sort of create the points in space now because this is just an abstract a description of where the points are so tap again and we need to type in points again maybe points plural now because not add points we are gonna construct points now there's a little bit of guessing delete points is certainly out of a question here points to volume is out of question that would be interesting for simulation of smoke for example but we just want to construct points and you see 
point position, point position, both in green, lovely, connection done. And this is blue, like this output is blue here, so it's uh, basically a geometry here, and this is very easy for the output. Now, this is a whole chain. When we press the key L, we create a new layout for these things, so they um, are more or less in a grid position here. So, polyplane shape feeds the information about the points to the point position node. The point position node hand, hands them over to a construction node which constructs our points. This is the industrial place where the points are being constructed and we put them out so we can actually see them. Minimize this and here you see the points now. The points are exactly at the places where the red ones were before but now they're independent so we can hide the plane and we, we could actually hide the handle as well. And now we can see the points here. We can render them and now watch out how long it takes for them to render. And this is totally different from rendering end particles which would have rendered 10 frames within a few seconds now. But this is still thinking and now it's done. I don't know why that is, why it takes that long. The GPU rendering doesn't help here. It's not graphics intense anyway, so it has to do with Bifrost Graph, and uh, I don't know why it is. Anyway, not many points in the scene don't know. What we cannot do right now is change the size of the points, change the color of the points, and give the points a random position. All these things would be extra nodes in the node chain. And you find tutorials about random positioning of points, which are actually quite complicated, but uh, which would be the next step after you've completed this step here. So we need more nodes here in order to input values into a random node and put the random node into the proper node here, because all the chains need nice connections, green and light blue. Well, your homework is this. You find the scene in my blog. You can download it. It's a zip file. Just unzip it and put it in your project folder. Open it and you have that, well, handle animation, the wave handle animation. And then you can render it out with points by constructing yourself this Bifrost graph or any other graph if you like. Try randomness and with this I leave you for now. Bye bye.